All right, so check this tech fans. Intel is finally releasing some 10 nanometer CPUs onto the market. Now, unfortunately though, this is the mobile market, which means tablets, maybe phones, but we're gonna see a lot of laptops and you know, all kinds of little devices probably get this, those little mini atom computers, all this type of stuff will probably take these new CPUs. Now, haven't really heard much about what's gonna be going on on the desktop side of things, but but all of the CPUs that we're going to be talking about today, these are very low power requirement CPUs, which means they're trying to be more like ARM technology. If you guys missed the video, you guys should definitely check it out because Microsoft, Qualcomm, and others, these companies are all trying to push ARM technology because ARM technology requires a lot less power to operate the CPU, which means you can get a lot longer battery life in laptops, cell phones, all of that kind of stuff now Intel definitely dropped the ball before when it comes to like cell phone technology we've seen that Intel doesn't really have a CPU in any cell phone on the market Qualcomm is the king and you know Apple has who they work with which is a variant of the arm technology so Intel is completely pretty much you know screwed themselves on that and on the desktop side of things, we see AMD creeping up. 3900X is a great CPU. It's half the cost of the equivalent CPU from Intel, which is $1,000. So that's just totally crazy stuff. But in the market for, let's say, a tablet or a laptop, all of these new Y and U series CPUs are gonna be really good for these products because they're 10 nanometer, they're all the latest Sykes Lake CPUs, so they're gonna have great embedded graphics in them, they're gonna have much more faster wireless and everything else, so you know that everything that you're doing on the internet's gonna be much faster. Um, Everything about these CPUs is supposed to be more powerful, but still save you power and not require you to have a whole lot of power to run them. And let's take a look at them. Intel's going to be introducing 11 mobile PC SKUs in the 10th generation Intel Core processor family. Some of these processors will have Intel Iris Plus graphics, and these graphics are all based on a new graphic engine and are supposed to be twice as fast as the previous generation built on graphics chip which hopefully means that we're gonna be seeing 1080p gameplay with double the frame rate. So PUBG, Grand Theft Auto 5, Fortnite, all those type of games, hopefully will be totally playable at 1080p and at a decent frame rate as well. These CPUs will also feature Intel Wi-Fi 6 Gig Plus support, which is nearly three times faster Wi-Fi than the .11 AC Wi-Fi 5, which is available currently. These CPUs are also going to offer Thunderbolt 3 integrated for the first time and with up to four ports and up to four times faster than USB 3.1. Now one thing strange as far as the nomenclature and naming goes is that these CPUs are still having the same names that have been applied to CPUs going on for decades. Once again, we're gonna see i3, i5, and i7. Can't these guys come up with some new names? I mean, really, Intel? Well, anyways, there'll be three CPUs in the Intel Core i3 generation. Now, the highest one will feature two cores, four threads, up to nine watts of nominal TDP, four megabytes of LL cache, up to 48 execution units with a base frequency up to 1.2 gigahertz with a max turbo frequency up to 3.4 gigahertz and these chips will also feature a graphics frequency up to 0.9 megahertz now how that graphics frequency is really going to translate i guess we'll have to wait until we see the laptops now in the Intel Core i5 side of things, we're going to see five CPUs. Now the top of the line CPUs in this generation will feature four cores with eight threads, up to 15 watts of nominal TDP, six megabytes of LL cache, up to 64 execution units, featuring a base frequency from 0.7 to 1.2 gigahertz with a max turbo frequency up to 3.7 gigahertz. Now the graphics frequency on these CPUs will be 1.05 megahertz. Now on the high end side of things, we see the Intel Core i7 series of CPUs. They will have three different SKUs. Now the top of the line SKU will feature four cores, eight threads, up to 28 watts of nominal TDP, eight megabytes of LL cache, 
up to 64 execution units, a base frequency from 1.0 to 2.3 gigahertz, with a maximum turbo frequency up to 4.1 gigahertz. And these CPUs will feature a graphics frequency up to 1.1 megahertz. All right, so there you have it. Intel's latest 11 SKUs based on obviously new 10 nanometer technology. Now, during the briefing, like I kept waiting for somebody to make like a corny joke about the name. So like at the very end, the guy goes, Ice Lake, they're just, now you guys guess what he said after that. Cool, right? <laughs> Ice Lake, they're just cool. Now, they do look pretty good on paper, I have to say. As far as the frequency levels go, the power goes, they look good. If they can actually do well, um, all of these CPUs will offer much longer battery life. They're gonna have much better Wi-Fi and connectivity like that. Hopefully we're gonna see a lot better, much more robust gaming on the Iris side of things, because honestly, for me, it's been kind of weak so far. If you're an office guy and you're just doing spreadsheets, yeah, it's cool, but if you really want to do any kind of decent kind of gaming, uh, the Intel Zomborg graphics have kind of always sucked. AMD's been beating them for quite a while. Hopefully we'll see a change here now. These laptops are probably gonna be rolling onto the market right around the holidays. That's probably what you're gonna see. That's, if I was Intel, that's what I'd be doing as well. I'd be waiting to roll all these laptops out right around Christmas time, Black Friday, and all that good stuff so they can sell as many of them as possible. So that's probably what we're going to see. Um, but that's it, you know. Um, Obviously, you're probably not going to just be able to go out and buy these CPUs everywhere. I mean, I mean, some people are going to probably be able to access them if you wanted to have a laptop CPU. Why you really would you want in your PC? I don't know, but you know, possibly somebody would want to. Um, this is the only area of the market that I see Intel right now still maintaining, com you know, being competitive other than the server market. And the desktop market, AMD is really hitting them. We all know when the phone market and all that, Qualcomm and ARM, they have that shit just totally covered. So hopefully Intel will do okay in this particular thing. But as far as the sheer performance goes and all that stuff, we'll have to wait and see when the laptops get out and then actually break out the reviews and go, hey, yeah, these CPUs are really cool. Be like, and eh, now nah, they suck. But until then, I'm Elric. You've been watching Tech Tomorrow. We'll have links down below if you want to get more information about this. Check out what Intel has to say on their site. Um, we'll be here. Subscribe if you like what you see. And hey, hit the notifications button and, and maybe they'll notify you. They haven't been doing it much lately, but you know, hopefully they'll fix themselves. They're like a broken toy. Or like Humpty Dumpty who fell and they just didn't have no damn super glue that day. Peace. <laughs>